Welcome. Welcome. Thank you so much for being here. I'm Rebecca Liao, I'm co-founder and CEO here at Saga, and on behalf of the entire protocol, I wanna say we're entirely grateful to you guys for coming here. We know you had your choice of parties, and uh, y'all liked it to be scared shitless, so I appreciate it. Uh, but Saga is a layer one protocol. We are a layer one to launch layer ones. We are a chain to launch chains, and we are re-architecting how developers and users are interacting with the blockchain. So we emphasize infinite scalability, costless transactions, and complete interoperability among ourselves, but also with other ecosystems. And uh, no surprise that with that kind of priority list, we are really changing how developers and users are finding it much, much simpler to interact with the blockchain. We went live in April this year, and it was the first opportunity that our games really got to be able to go to market. And tonight is the first time that we are showing our flagship titles to all of you. So thank you for being here and welcome to the space where the crazies dare to dream their craziest dreams. He thrusts his fist against the post and still insists he sees the ghost. He thrusts his fist against the post and still insists he sees the ghost. The boat told the storm cold and poked and coasted the boat. The boat told the storm cold and He thrusts his fist against the post. Sunlit the way out as we soared to new heights. New technologies led us to the farthest reaches of our imaginations. We built new worlds on the precipice of history. We weren't alone. The enemy horde closed in. It is clear we are not ready for what is to come. No. We are one. Learn how to act as a team. How to fight. We push back. Fought tooth and nail. And in the end, the light won. No matter where you stand in the cosmos, cosmos. you can see the entire universe. the crazies who dare to dream their craziest dreams. Saga. Amazing. That was our main at launch trailer, and uh, that played all across the world uh, in the lead up to our launch this last April. So, uh, Saga is first and foremost a technology platform, and once we established that we had the infrastructure to bring on games, we wanted to complete the life cycle for game development, and that means becoming a publisher. So in March this year, at GDC, we announced our publishing house, which is called Saga Origins, and what we're looking to do is to bring cutting-edge quality games to market. We are the new indie game publisher. We are the only Web3 chain to have a dedicated publishing house of our own. And why did we decide to take this step? Because for all of you who have had the lovely experience of dealing with other chain foundations, you know how chains generally go about grants for games, which is we give you a grant, the grant unlocks based on certain user milestones, and the user milestones are all on you as the game developer, good luck. Now, all of us here in the industry know that that is ass backwards. That is not how this industry works. We are the chain. We are the platform. We have the scale and the resources. It is our responsibility to come up with the users for you as the game. And that is the job of a publisher. And you'll be able to see very soon for the flagship titles that we are announcing tonight that Saga has worked very hard to bring games seamlessly to market with technology that is truly hyper-focused on developer needs. We are the space where the crazies dare to dream the craziest dreams. Uh, you'll hear that a lot tonight. And 
Um, we think that the best way that Web3 can contribute to publishing is to really focus on the distribution part. This is how we make gaming real. We love independent games. We believe that a new type of publisher can support a talent-driven approach to unlock creativity and fresh storytelling, not just in the Web3 space, but in wider gaming. And all our games span both Web2 and Web3. So for those of you who are Web3 DGENs and junkies, you'll, there'll be something for you in all of these titles. But at the end of the day, if you like the more traditional gaming experience, that is what you'll be able to see in all Saga titles. We support with curation, discovery, and community benefits. This is what it means to be a publisher. And we invite original thinkers and indies to join us, embrace all devs and players, and offer deeper levels of benefits to those who leverage the platform. So tonight, there are three flagship titles that we will be unveiling. Uh, not too bad for four months of being a live network. There will be many more down the line, but these are incredibly special because they are our first three. So what is a Saga Origins game? You hear so much about what it is we aspire to do, but when we actually look at gaming titles and evaluate whether we're going to take them on for publishing, what do we look for? So first and foremost, provocative, expansive, uncompromising. This is our tagline. This is also the criteria by which we judge games. So let's take each of these in turn. Provocative, first and foremost, say something new, say something different. This is Web3. We are meant to push the envelope, and we will publish the titles that big studios pass over. Why do they pass them over? Well, uh, sometimes the content is just too offensive, and um, the studio doesn't want to do any sort of brand risk to take on this kind of content, whatever. It's Web3. It is a permissionless system. You can create whatever the hell kind of game you want to create. Um, sometimes it's because the publisher is actually just more interested in the numbers. And um, they're not really interested in the creative vision behind the game, which is a shame. And sometimes, um, actually oftentimes, these big studios have tried and true methods for getting revenue based on gameplay, and they don't want to deviate from that, so they're not risk takers. Whatever the reason may be, we think that your game deserves a home, and that is the kind of story that we want to bring to life. For us, gaming is all about interactive storytelling, and we want the game developers who are looking to break the mold. Now, we all know that stories don't end with the screen credits. The magic of gaming is that you can get your player base, your creators, to extend the universes of your games. And so they will contribute with their own arcs, their own storylines, their own characters. In order for that to happen, the game has to allow for expansive worlds. So that's the second criteria that we look for. When we say expansive worlds, we're thinking of the Saga multiverse. This is our ecosystem. This is a world in which games really collaborate with one another on their intellectual property and the gamers are able to freely contribute their ideas and imagination to the game world as well. And of course, uncompromising. It's your game. It's your game, your vision. We want you to create it however the hell you want. And one of the best things that we can do as base infrastructure is make sure that we don't stand in the way of your design space. So the way that most chains are architected it requires gas for transactions, for instance, or other design constraints that really make the gameplay not player friendly. One of the things that we've worked very hard to do is to make sure that you will never face that on Saga. All right, so we've talked about what we're looking for uh, in terms of game titles. Let's talk about what we do for you. Okay, so this is a Saga Origins difference. Why go with a new publishing house that is a Web3 protocol and focused on indie games? Well, um, first and foremost, let's start with redefining something that I think has honestly been abused in Web3, and that is the term ownership. You've probably heard that term many years now, um, whenever you come to this conference and a Web3 protocol tries to talk to you. Ownership for them means ownership of in-game assets, of NFTs, maybe ownership of a token, so you can participate in an in-game economy. That's all well and good, but we think the real magic of Web3 in gaming is creative ownership. If you play this game, if you contribute your time to it, if you make friends here, if you really become a part of the community, this game belongs to you. You should have a say in how this game gets developed. And in order for that to happen, you need a creator economy. UGC 
play your own servers, modification of games. This is how games ultimately scale. And we are responding to player demand to be more fully integrated across all aspects of a particular game. Now, it can be as simple as starting off with a customized skin on Saga, or you can go all the way to having your own player-owned server on chains on Saga. Now, you're probably thinking, well, creator economy kind of exists in traditional gaming already. What does Web3 bring to it? You don't ever need to ask for permission in crypto. If you have an idea to extend a game, to add a certain asset to a game, you can do that. You can do that on the chain. You don't need to ask for permission from anyone. That is what it means to have decentralized generation of content. Now, to achieve that, you need a great community. One of the most heartbreaking things this year has been to watch some games that we feel are actually not so bad in crypto, in Web3. And a lot has been invested in them. Complete flop. This happens in wider gaming as well. We all know it's a hits-driven business. But you know, where did they fall down exactly? And one of the big factors is when it comes to community expectations nowadays, people expect to have a hand in the development of your game. They expect to take that journey with you as the game developer. And so you have to build with your community. Even if you're building a massive game, it takes two, three, four, five years or more to build that game. You cannot announce the title and then disappear. You have to engage with your community the entire time. And that is something that we're quite good at at Saga, that we can marry your roadmap to community engagement and a true go-to-market throughout the entire life cycle of your title. And finally, discovery. One thing that we're quite proud of is how we are able to discover new talent and really elevate the game creator. When you build a game on Saga, you are not some nameless, faceless game dev behind some big studio or publisher. You are at the forefront. You are the genius behind the game, and therefore we should be telling your story alongside that of the game. We're also looking to curate diverse experiences for our audiences. I think we can all agree that across most distribution channels in gaming, the storytelling quality is starting to get a little bloated, a little stale. We're seeing the thing, same things over and over again. And so we want to open that door to experimentation and originality in gaming. All right, so um, with all that, uh, that can be applied, honestly, to any aspect of gaming. But what is the, the Web3 specific aspect of this? So the truth of the matter is that in Web3, you have new methods of customer acquisition, so conversion, retention, and monetization that are hugely beneficial to games over and above what you can get from traditional gaming. All right. So the power of the Saga Origins ecosystem is that, first and foremost, you can find players, guilds, DAOs, communities, Call it what you want. You can find your players anywhere. The power of our interoperability is such that you can create a game instance, assets, anything tradable, et cetera, on one ecosystem transferred to another ecosystem. That is your ability to reach as many players as possible. There are also unique player incentives that only exist in Web3, are only possible with crypto. And it really helps to organize your communities. Things include play to airdrop, but also things around asset liquidity as well. Player activation is incredibly powerful in this space. And the retention numbers are far, far higher than anything that you would achieve in traditional UA. And then finally, we uh, engage, of course, with influencers and creators across the spectrum, as well as media partners to create that game awareness before your game hits the market. All right, one thing that I do want to address here, because I do get asked this question a lot, is what is the Web3 gaming revolution? And I think there's been so much emphasis on the core technology in crypto that a lot of people have this misconception that what the revolution is about is that first you started off with consoles and gaming, and then you went to PC, then to mobile, and now we're on blockchain. Now, this tells a story of hardware innovation. Blockchain is not hardware. Blockchain is software at the end of the day. It runs on hardware, but it is not a hardware innovation. What we think is the correct revolution to really chase after is in the distribution. This is how gamers organize themselves and form communities. So way, way back in the day when you had nothing digital, yeah, you had fans screaming outside Sony offices. But then you got more sophisticated. So we got to Reddit boards, we got to Slack and Discord, anonymized transactions across mobile devices, and now we have blockchain. This is all about community building on the chain, UGC, and distribution. 
All right, all of this sprung from our innovator program. So uh, until March last year, we did not have a publishing house. What do we have before then? It was an ecosystem program called the Innovator Program. And being a Saga innovator means something quite special. There are currently 380 projects that are building on us. 80% of that is gaming. That is by design. We have deliberately focused on acquiring gaming projects. What do these projects get? I mean, it's the usual perks of technical support, a lot of go-to-market, especially when you're ready to go live, um, general marketing for the project, as well as a wealth of other resources. Um, of course, all of these come to the table when we publish a game, but you know, slightly elevated when we decide to be your publisher of record. All right. Um, I would be remiss to not talk a little bit more about our multiverse. So deeper in the ecosystem, the advantages start to grow. Talked a lot about content creation, UGC, distribution. But in the Saga multiverse, it's not just your creators and your gamers, explorers that are doing this. It is also your fellow projects. So it's not just a publishing company. It's an ecosystem where I promise you a lot of our games are working with one another for cross IP collabs. There are no armies of agents, lawyers, you know, red tape accountants to follow them around when they do these IP content deals. It's actually a pretty free ecosystem of exploration. So it's collaborative formats for the creators, UGC creativity, decentralized economy. All right. This is our North Star at the end of the day. What is true value for players and for the developers? All right. Some stats to share with you guys. I'm not going to go through all of these in detail, but suffice to say that we've run a lot of player acquisition campaigns for our games at this point. And across the last six months, we do consistently hit six figures in terms of the results for each of these campaigns. Again, user retention is abnormally high in Web3, and that is something that we take advantage of, full advantage of, when we decide to activate a community and then bring them forward for the life cycle of the game. None of this would be possible without our technology. I have to remind people that Saga, at the end of the day, we are able to do what we do because we have a great marketing team, because we have a great publishing team, but first and foremost, because we have the technology that's necessary. We are infinitely scalable. It is a layer one to launch layer ones. You should never, ever run out of block space on Saga. You should never run into performance issues on Saga. Costless transactions, again, this was a huge friction point for users. We've gotten rid of that. Fully interoperable, so you can take your assets anywhere, and access to liquidity from any ecosystem. This is ultimately what makes a project viable and um, consistently vibrant across its life cycle. There are some use cases, therefore, that are only possible on Saga. I'll go through them real quick. Fast bridging, this is something that is completely unique to us. Again, ability to bridge out to any ecosystem. Build a game on Saga, you can reach a guild on any other chain. Recycled gas tokens, that goes to the costless transactions and the usability. Uh, and of course, horizontally sharding apps and games. So this is something where you'll see from our flagship titles is becoming more and more popular because it's becoming more and more possible, which is to have your own player owned servers on your own chain. This is entirely your own ecosystem, but it connects back to the game itself. All right, so we believe ultimately in the future of decentralized generation of content. And of course, gaming is leading the way once again. So I hope you join us at Saga Origins. It is a platform for creativity and freedom. And with that, I am happy to introduce the first flagship title. This is Angelic, the Chaos Theater. Angelic is a narrative strategy RPG. It is the most beautiful game in all of crypto. No offense to the games that are coming up afterwards or the other titles that we have in our catalog, but uh, Angelic, as you can see, is, is mighty good looking. And the lore behind it is incredibly rich. So it is a post-apocalyptic setting. The world has been destroyed and humanity has to rebuild itself by becoming neo-humans and angels, but angels themselves are quite flawed. So this game is now available as an open alpha version on Steam. I would highly encourage you guys to go check it out. It's an incredible title and it's already trending. So um, we're very, very proud to bring this game to market. The next one is Lusa, Lusa the Final Frontier. This is an MMO um, space battle royale and it is, it is just, it's candy. It's incredibly entertaining. I mean, this is your guilty, guilty pleasure. High quality first person shooter. It is also set in the post apocalypse. This is why we have the haunted house guys because all of these 
first flagship titles have some sort of post-apocalyptic dystopian theme to them, but I promise we're not quite that dark at Saga. Um, Lusa is probably one of the best uses of AI in gaming. When you talk to a real game developer, AI is not some theoretical thing where they talk about the possibilities 10, 15 years from now. They are looking to enhance the player experience. The graphics that you're about to see from Lusa are the result of a very close partnership with NVIDIA where they have worked on enhancing the graphic quality as well as the quality of the NPCs, and it should feel very much like you are playing in the real world against people that you may not know. All right, and then last but absolutely not least is God's Legacy. God's Legacy is a mythic sci-fi fantasy RPG, and it takes you from Slavic, Sumerian, Olmec mythology to the present day all the way to a dystopian future. It is a huge body of lore enough to fill several volumes, it's wildly entertaining gameplay, and we are so, so honored, honestly, and thrilled to have this title. Everything we do at Saga, we do for the crazies who dare to dream their craziest dreams. When I was here last year, I said, our eyes have not yet seen, nor our ears heard, nor our minds imagined what we can build together. Well, we at Saga have seen it, our indies live it, and we are here to shock the gaming world again. In this moment, I am asking you to join us. Thank you so much for being here. And to all of our game devs, our innovators, our crazies, our community, thank you so, so much for this incredible journey. And let's keep it going. Thanks so much, guys.